Um, we'll call the meeting back to order. So we are now at item 16, Regional Sector Science Technology Strategy. I mean, you can, uh, Mr. Palmer. I was just filling my face. Um, I'll take the paper as read. I was going to do a presentation, but I'll, I won't do that. Um, just a couple of points. Um, one is, I'm in the science advisory group that's pulled this together, so I'm, I'm pretty close to it. Um, bringing it to you now, simply because if we don't, it's yesterday's um, fish and chip wrapper. It's been released, it's active. It's just socialising it with you. It integrates all the special interest group strategies. Um, its role now is really to inform and influence um, direction of both this council's investment, but also the broad range of externals who are who are listed in the strategy. So I'm happy to take questions. Just um, probably a more general question. Some of the work that the SIGs are doing, special interest groups in general, how do we tap into some of that stuff as a council? And I, I think this question's probably been asked around the country, but there's some great work going on mm -hmm. that we're in some cases blissfully unaware of. Yeah. So we're trying to, well, first of all, we have our own people in most of the special interest groups, so our staff are part of them. The second part of it is that they have to develop a um, strategy and a, an annual business plan. So what are they doing? And more recently, uh, this region was active mm -hmm. in the development of what we call uh, the Regional Sector Information Portal, which puts all of the SIG business into a central place for our vertical and um, horizontal knowledge transfer, so from the regional chief executives right through to people in the special interest groups, th they can see the conversations and the work that's happening in the various groups to allow that um, joining up of conversations that might be just exactly the one we had before around the marine space. What are the coasties doing that m the land um, monitoring SIG might want to understand, or what is what are the surface water managers doing that the groundwater people might be interested in? It allows that, that integration. So that's the real focus from the sector now to try and better coordinate and, and improve the communication between all of these various groups that are in operation. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Do you think a group that calls itself SAG could be taken seriously? <laughs> Would you buy a used car from me? <laughs> okay. Any other questions around this? It's something you can peruse at your leisure. Councillor Belford, you everyone someone happy to move that we accept this and accept and receive this report. Receive and note this report. Uh, Councillor Scott, you happy with that? Uh, Councillor Bevan, thank you. Discussion. Put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. And against carried. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could just refer back to um, the marine information review. Uh, no, no, no. Um, uh, could a copy of that be sent to, and the agenda item to Stuart Nash and Neil Curtin, for for the simple reason of trying to make sure that everyone stays on the same track and don't race off in different directions. Well done. Will you Chairman, Chairman, can I, can I just... All you have to do is encourage them. Point noted. Sorry if I could just help, Chairman. Um, uh, Mr Nash has, uh, has called a meeting uh, in a couple of weeks' time and has invited uh, Ian and I to uh, attend and, uh, and pr pr uh, provide a presentation on the report, but certainly we will get a copy of it out uh, more publicly, and I actually wonder whether we'll a press release today mm. uh, off the back of the report's a good idea as well. Good idea. Okay, monthly work plan. So, so will that report incorporate the critical typos that Councillor Scott's picked up? Yes, we'll, if she's got them, we'll, we'll take them gratefully. Thank you. Great. Okay, questions on the monthly work plan looking forward? Mr Chairman, I'll just point out on the first page, um, transport decision by Hastings District Council to move the bus terminus in Eastbourne Street um, is considered by uh, transport staff and myself um, and I imagine Councillor Barker 
uh, to be a, a, a disastrous mistake. Um, we've since uh, written to the, the mayor and councillors asking them to reconsider before the adoption of their annual plan on the basis of the severe disadvantaged bus um, customers and the fact that there was absolutely no consultation with, um, with bus users. What the outcome will be, I don't know. I hope they've got enough sense to reconsider. I did send a copy of the, of the letter to each of the Hastings constituent members. Mm. Hmm? My, um, I had a chat to, just hang on, I, I had a chat to Mayor Yule um, Monday night. Um, I saw him out and his, uh, his thoughts were, doesn't necessarily impact on their annual plan. Um, he, he, won't, he, he suggests it won't be changed uh, when they adopt their plan, which is tomorrow afternoon. Um, but he's happy to work with us uh, further if, if they may be convinced, but they won't be by tomorrow afternoon when they adopt their annual plan. Okay. So, so what does that mean? It means no, <laughs> pretty much. Does that mean they're going to go ahead with the change? Pretty much. And think about it later? Uh, at this stage, they're not going to make a decision to change their intention to shift it at this stage. But he understands the angst that we have He's not getting that flavour from his people. That's that's his issue. You, you definitely didn't get a copy of the letter. Well, I don't remember. I'm, I'm just reading my CA tomorrow. I'll, I'll Any other questions, uh, uh, Councillor Scott? Uh, do you want, Mr. Chairman? June is uh, July is very close, especially early July. Have we actually got a suggested date for that meeting? The, well, it's meeting tomorrow. H Puds is meeting tomorrow. Uh, no, the well, seminar. Ah, oh, right. Joint Council. Yes. I'm not sure there's a date. It'll be part of the discussion tomorrow, Councillor Scott. Yeah. I'm chairing that meeting tomorrow. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So we will be notified as soon as possible. If Absolutely. It is it'll be July. it'll be a consideration of the day tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Councillor Hewitt. Now, I'm not specific to this, but we received an email about a meeting in Wairau to do with some tripartite agreement. Can you Aye. tell me what that's about? So that's uh, an agreement between Hawke's Bay Regional Council, Wairau District Council and uh, Whakaemi o Te Wairau, which is the treaty group, uh, just uh, about, um, if you like, aligning some conversations around what their aspirations are and, and uh, a linkage to us, if you like. Uh, and it includes and I haven't seen the final document, but it does include some reserve land of WDC that they are looking at co-managing or sharing or doing something with. So, and I think there is quite a consideration of the Wairau Riverbank as well, which ties in with um, the work uh, that we've done in the last couple of years, certainly around the long-term plan for beautifying the riverbank. So, so there's a, it's just trying to get the worlds to collide a bit more seamlessly. So that's what that's about. Councillor Belford. Uh, item 14, the Deloitte peer review on the 8th of July. I just was looking for clarification. So we'll get a document from them beforehand in the normal agenda window type process. And then uh, having that meeting uh, per Councillor Barker's uh, 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 comments uh, a time or so ago, we're not going to then be expected on that day to uh, approve any uh, conditions precedent or anything like that. This is just purely a Deloitte day. Can somebody? Well, that? I'll I'll start it if you like. I mean, this this state has moved around council, as you're well aware. Um, Deloitte's are really keen to get you a written report. Um, so as you can have time to read it prior to, to the meeting, which is proposed now to be on the 8th, on the 8th of July. Um, um, the uh, meeting of H Brick is today, was it? Tomorrow. 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 So it really depends on what comes out of that meeting and uh, where, the, um, where the, the various strands are, whether um, Deloitte's will have what they need to compile a written report. So it's, it's still... It's, 
the intention is to do it, that's for sure. Second point, with whether on, if the meeting is on the 8th, um, whether there will be conditioned precedence, do you want to have a work at that? Well, as I explained to you yesterday, Councillor, in the email reply, um, th th again, that's very much in, at this stage, still in the hands of Hbrook, uh, okay. as to, uh, th they are the ones that have to put forward a recommendation to Council to say uh, that the conditions precedent have been met. Um, uh, I'm not aware of what's on their agenda tomorrow, but uh, there may well be some discussion on that. But uh, until until we hear from them, we can't confirm or otherwise. But if they do indicate tomorrow uh, that the conditions, that in their view the conditions precedent have been met, um, uh, then it'll be our intention to bring that onto the council agenda on the eighth. Just answer. <clears throat> a follow-up question for this, because I've got some pressure on me for the 8th of July, which is Friday, not normally here, I normally have things put on it. So what exactly are we going to be doing on the 8th of July? Um, <coughs> the Deloitte peer review, definitely. And if HBRIC come to or inform us that they have, um, uh, I guess, satisfied themselves or are in a position to give us a paper that to demonstrate that the conditions precedent, in their view, have been met, um, then we will also aim to have that on the agenda for the 8th as well. But we, as I said, we, we still do not know. Other questions? Oh, I wasn't asking you for an answer, Councillor Bevan. I thought, you, I thought you were indicating you had a question. Councillor Bell. I have a few more. On, on uh, just a comment on page 19 uh, uh, regarding Ian Milner, we, we had a meeting of the economic uh, working group of Tank the other day, and he made a presentation that seemed to put him right squarely in the role of sorting out all the land use issues related to the Haratunga Plains. So it seemed like a critical piece of work to that committee to understand what present land uses were, what their value might be, how they might change and so forth. His, I would say that threatens to be a bottleneck uh, in, in the process. Just a comment. Um, yes, Councillor, look, we have got an exposure uh, in this area and I, look, I think um, uh, we, we have got some economics capability in the organisation which has been heavily focused on supporting the RWSS so once we move past uh, financial close uh, we'll be in a position to um, to redeploy some resource in, in, into, into tank around the economics of land use. Having said that, um, the loss of Mr Milner is, um, is significant to the land management team uh, and I just make the observation that um, as we increase the requirement for the private sector to uh, deliver for us the sort of farm environment uh, planning that you've seen in PC6 and likely to come in other catchments, uh, we're going to be at ongoing risk, I think, as an organisation of losing uh, staff to the consultancy sector, uh, and we're going to have to meet the market, I think, in terms of uh, attracting uh, staff for these functions. Okay. Um, number 27 refers to 70 feral cats being caught. Uh, uh, may I ask what happens to those cats? And, uh, my understanding is we have them for lunch here, I think. <laughs> if we wanted to stimulate the debate that uh, Councillor uh, uh, Rex wants to have, why don't we put out a release that says we caught and exterminated seven the feral cats? Just a, just a suggestion. Uh, they, they, are dead. they are dead when they're caught, that's uh, for sure. The, uh, just I, there, on, pay, on number 41, there's a refer, reference to a Whakatū Wolskauer's hearing date on the 16th of July. Can I just assume that that's here? Does that take place here? So I'd have an interest in observing that. And that's it for me. Okay, other questions? Some, someone happy to move? Happy to move, Councillor Dick. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Bevan. Happy to second that. Further discussion? Put that motion in. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Carried. Uh, minor items. Argyle uh, East School Planting. Councillor Hewitt. 
So on Saturday, as a result of a lovely invitation I received from a little girl called Jessica, I popped along to the Argyle East Primary School. They had a community planting day there. And um, it was one of those special days, and I, I know Councillor Scott's spoken often of being involved in these sort of days, but um, the school is alongside a creek and it was um, historically it had a lot of willows in and no one was allowed down there. Um, regional councils put significant funding in to clear out the willows and now they've put funding um, in towards replanting. But this is a community project which has been done in association with Project Crimson and the Mazda Foundation, so Rod Klein was there and um, obviously speaking very strongly for the Cape to City project as a as he an ambassador, champion of the project. Um, it, w it was a pretty cool day. It, it was cool literally because it was there was a jolly good frost and it was very, very cold. But, um, but having these little children running around in the wheatland that's already established and as well as planting and, and showing me these native species and quoting off Latin names and diving under flax bushes and you know, the, the biodiversity that these kids were spouting to me was, and they're only little, you know, like eight and nine year olds, was just really inspiring for the work that we are doing as councillors. And, and I know Mike, I mean, you, you've, you've had this, this privilege for a very long time. Um, it, was, it was wonderful to see what they did. They, they popped 1,400 trees in the ground and, and they spoke about this outdoor area as being an outdoor education area and it, it absolutely was. So. Um, so the, the thanks came back for, um, from the community for the, the contribution from Regional Council and just to flag that some of your staff has turned up voluntarily on their Saturday. Sally Chandler was there and Maddie McLean and um, Warwick Hesketh. So I think that the Council um, could be really proud of their efforts and being involved with this community. Mm. Thank you. Uh, Business Hub, Councillor Scott. Um, anniversary of the Business Hub was heard um, was celebrated last week, Mr Chairman. What I want to comment on, and it was attended by um, some of the councillors, um, want to comment on was that the um, presentation took the form of each one speaking to their job plus um, one of their clients giving a success story around it. It was interesting to note, and I think from memory it was the marketer from um, Craggy Range, was talking about the introductions that had gone through some of the relationships that had been built up and how that had opened the doors for them to getting into um, a business there and how successful it had been. And it made me aware that it's time we followed up on our visit and saw that any doors could be opened were actually open. So I just really do beg that we have a debrief with the appropriate authorities, uh, the appropriate you know, interest groups on that visit. Water bottling consents, Councillor Bevan. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, we were advised recently of an application for a change of uh, consent from, I think, processing, a processing plant to water bottling in the Awatoto area uh, maybe a week ago. Um, and the amount involved, correct me if I'm wrong, is not far off a million cubic metres. I think it was about 18 or 19,000 cubic metres weekly from memory. Um, so it's just, it, it, it raises uh, the potential for further angst from this community about the whole business of water bottling and I just wanted to ask a couple of questions about this to, to staff. Um, our, our pattern of behaviour in the past when we've received these consents is not to publicly notify them. What are the criteria for making that decision? And, and I'm wondering whether because of the public angst whether it's not something that the council itself should decide about the notification rather than the staff because if there's heat over this I think the, the council should be taking that decision and not the staff because they shouldn't get the heat over it and so I just ra raise the question because I'm interested in what the criteria are and whether that's an option we should be considering. So, so the criteria generally set out in the regional plan um, as well as notification assessments that apply in the Resource Management Act. In this case, it, it's, uh, it's not a new consent, it's an existing activity yep. and a change of purpose from vegetable processing and washing, I think, to, to water bottling, something along those lines with no change to rate and volume, <coughs> thereby the effects of the activity uh, from changing from its original purpose to the new one are, are the same because the rate and volume don't change. So a notification, notification assessment 
criteria probably wouldn't be triggered in that, that situation. Um, more broadly, just recall the discussion we had 18 months or so ago around this issue. Uh, one of the areas that we traversed was to consider whether uh, there was suitable reach in the consent conditions around review to allow councils change in policy, a la tank or any other process, to come back and gather up any consents for any activity and review them against the new policy framework and we got some advice from Matthew Conway at Simpson Grierson to say we could word them better. We've since, since integrated that process into our consenting um, activities and this application for example would see the consent reworded or the review clauses reworded to match the the updated wording that Matthew's provided us to, to allow us to pick it up and manage it if the policy changes. Um, and sorry, I'm just struggling. The second part of your question, I think, was around um, delegations. Was yeah, it? yeah, yeah. Delegate, delegated authorities. <coughs> yeah, so currently council uh, delegates th these decision-making processes, well, uh, uh, to staff. Um, some Sometimes they're decision-making processes, many times they're simply just processing um, uh, things rather than actually making a decision around a particular activity. Um, so they, they are a delegation from council to staff. You could at any stage call on any of those delegations and, and have them sit back with council. Okay, so just, just um, one um, follow-up question, and, and, and that is in regards to the company. I, I went and looked online to see what this company was about. It's, the directors are two people from Te Awamuta or somewhere in the Waikato. Um, one of them has since resigned, so there's a single director. I have no idea what the paid up capital of the company is or what its capacity is to do what it says it's going to do, but if it's going to be bottling a million cubic metres of water annually, then it's then it that gives it a similar capacity to the one that got built in Hillwood Road. Now, I have no idea whether it's our business to check to see whether the company has the capacity to do what it wants to do with the water or not, and whether the council has some role in making a judgment about that. So we, we don't reach into their financial wherewithal to, to carry out the activity um, other than our assessment looks at whether the, the um, effects of the activity and whether the, <coughs> the volume of water sought are actual and reasonable for the activity they want to carry out. Um, probably more relevant in that situation to an irrigation consent or a water bottling consent because typically they, they use everything they take. Um, but we don't look at the financial structure, the management structure, or any other structure, you know, commercial structure that sits with the company. The kick in that, though, of course, is that all of the consents have a lapse condition. So if it's not exercised, uh, typically two or five years, within a two or five year period, the consents will lap, lapse because they're not exercised. So they, they effectively no longer exist and that, that water comes back to council or back into the pot. So if they don't have the wherewithal to carry out the activity, they can't just sit on the water in perpetuity, it'll lapse and it'll come back. And, and can I just perhaps add to that that um, look, a million cubes is one billion litres. The North American uh, water bottling market annually is 50 billion litres. So the idea that, that any one consent holder in Hawke's Bay could take one fiftieth of the North American market, which is controlled by Pepsi and Coca-Cola, um, is fanciful. In fact, if you think about you know, even the Chinese market, a relatively um, significant proportion of one and a half billion people and selling how many water bottles you, you, you could sell into that market, most of these, if not all of these consent holders, won't be able to move even, even you know, a tenth of what they're consented to do in terms of placing water bottles into, into markets. So there is a lack of reality, I think, and I think in terms of people's ability to exercise consent and our ability to claw back having not exercised their consent uh, is a very real prospect. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's actually one of the issues just in my mind about this. Sorry, is it, just one more comment. Um, if, if, this is a, if this is a consent for apple growing or for a vineyard or something, We'll make a judgment about the volume of that consent and whether it's realistic to the purpose for which it's going to be used. We make no such judgment about water bottling, and I think that's wrong, and I think we need to do something about it. <coughs> Hence the, the review clauses that, will, as your policy develops, we'll be able to reach in and make those changes.
Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chairman. Chairman, could I just comment that the, the, the Transport Committee, as a standing item, is keeping an eye on water bottling because of uh, implications for uh, traffic congestion. Uh, at the moment, there are 40, about 40 containers of water going out from, from the port. So the volume's not great. And um, apart from, over and above the comments that have already been made by staff, um, water is a, a very undifferenti undifferentiated product and it's got a stand or fall in the marketplace. And as Nick Smith said the other day, there's a lot of uh, water bottling um, operations that have gone broke. So I think we can over um, estimate the, uh, the impact of this and perhaps we've got to be cautious but not panic. Thank you. Councillor Belford, burning rubber. Burning rubber. I've got a couple of uh, calls from the folks who are concerned that that I gather now on a regular basis at Miani, uh, a part of the part of the drill is is uh, some sort of uh, burning rubber uh, competition or something that winds up casting a pall over the nearby residents at the speedway at the speedway, ah. at the speedway and that uh, uh, Rubber, burnt rubber smoke is one of the more toxic things that one could come across. And these folks say they have complained to the regional council and gotten no satisfaction or interest raised. So I was just wondering if this is something that you've been, has written, risen to your level of attention, or could it? Uh, <coughs> come back to us on that. Well, short answer is yes. Um, you've been yes, doing it. Has, it. And Napier City ourselves, Hastings District and Ministry of Health are collectively looking at how we respond to it um, because un unhelpfully nobody has the right tool to address it uh, right now. Our plan doesn't specifically deal with burnout competitions at speedways, um, so we're looking at what our options are. Strategic plan refresh, uh, Mr Palmer. Excuse me. Um, Councillors will recall that um, uh, we advise you in the year of an intention to refresh the strategic plan, which is now five years old. Um, at the time, we suggested to you the approach we were going to take is that between now and the uh, local body elections that we would essentially do the, the analysis of our current state, how we've gone relative to the, um, the strategy and where, where we're going from here as an organisation. We've got um, three staff workshops over the next couple of weeks to get the views of uh, staff internally. Uh, but as part of that exercise, what we wanted to do was um, engage with yourselves as to your views about the opportunities and threats that, that sit out on the horizon for us as an organisation and your views on strengths and weaknesses of HBRC as it stands today. All that will get rolled up and be part of the information that will be provided to incoming councillors after the, um, the local body elections. Um, our question for you today is whether or not you have a preference for um, staff interviewing you uh, individually. Um, we did think probably that might be an easier way to go than having a workshop uh, with, with you as a group. And if we do engage with you individually, would you want that to be uh, undertaken by an independent uh, contractor uh, with whom you could perhaps have a more free and frank exchange than you might otherwise have with, with staff? Or are you happy for, uh, for staff to, um, to interview you directly? So that's the nature of the question. Can I just make an observation about this? Uh, uh, I always thought that the minor items were issues for councillors to raise you know, with councillors because it wasn't, we don't have a control of the agenda. And the chief executive has complete control of the agenda and so we, we so I just think firstly this is around the wrong way. The second thing is that I would have thought this is a better uh, issue for you as a chair, Fenton, <clears throat> to have a meeting with us before the council meeting afterwards and have an informal discussion. Because mm. I, I mean, I don't want to have to have a question and answer thing. I've got several ideas running around my head about how I'd like to approach it, but I would like to hear what every other council has to say about it so we find a, a pathway forward. And I just I don't think this is the best way of doing it. So that's just so, my view. So it, well, it, it is. Um, it has been raised. I, I tend to agree with you. This the first I've heard of this. Um, no disrespect to anyone, but look, I'm happy to pick it up and. Liaise, yeah, okay. Uh, so, so we want to write a paper on such a narrow, question. No, no, I, no. I, I agree with that, but I just think the chair could say, look, we need 10 minutes, 20 minutes uh, after a meeting, yeah. let's have a discussion. James, what do you want to do? And we Everyone gives around, so we come around and say, all right, this is what, how we'd like to handle it. A really good idea, James. I just want to have a discussion. Just can't have you. Okay, leave that, leave that with me. Okay, okay so let's go to public excluded. Um, 
And actually, Mr. Wears, I'd, I'd like to deal with the minutes first, actually. Um, once we get in there, so I'll ask you to leave the room for a few minutes of that. Um, so is someone having to move us into public excluded? Just observe the public himself excluded <coughs> at this point? Uh, yeah, all yeah. the public that are here will be excluded. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're self-excluded. 